I want to show you how easy it is to create the waffle stitch, as well as some thrifted finds and introduce you to our newest member, Pascal. Pascal is 10 weeks old and he's been an incredible bundle of joy. He is not a standard and he's not a miniature, but he is what they refer to as a Moyen poodle. Moyen means in French, medium. And again, not a standard, not a miniature. He's going to be the in-between size. It's been incredibly fun to watch him grow and learn and do all the puppy training and we've got a long way to go, but he is super receptive and just an abundance of energy, but we absolutely love it. He has been so incredibly intuitive, so every step of the way in the puppy training, he is catching on. It always is so mind-blowing to see them as they grow and learn on a daily basis. Thrift shopping can be so much fun. You'd be surprised what you can pick up. Sometimes it can be a hit and a miss, but when you go around and you find something you like, definitely grab it, because with a little bit of paint, you'd be surprised what you could create. So to create more of a uniform look, the top of it is concrete. So I think on the bottom, I think I'm gonna try to make this cohesive. So I'm gonna start just with some plain black chalk paint and then I think I'm going to see what I can do to kind of give it that more concrete look all over both of them. So I'm going to go and apply two full coats of black chalk paint and let it dry completely. So it's probably best just to leave it overnight so that way it's completely dried underneath into both coats. There's a lot of carves and a lot of detail on these candle holders, but I think what I will do is actually give a full coat and actually stipple a little bit of the paint because as much texture as possible I think will help me in the next step I'd like to do. You could use any brushes or matte chalk paint finish that you have to create this look. So both of the candle holders are completely dry. I let them dry overnight. Now what I'd like to do is apply a white wax. My objective is to create a little bit more of a concrete overall look. So I'm going to apply the white wax and this way it can get into all of that extra detail that I've been able to create with the paint as well as the carved detail of the candle holders. To remove some of the white wax, this way I can kind of knock it back a little bit, I'm going to use a lint-free shop towel. If you don't have any shop towels, you can just use a lint-free cloth. So what I'll do is I'll go around and hit all the high points of the candle holders. Then, once I've completed the entire candle holder, I may just go back and just lightly hit the high points again with the white wax. But this is the whole fun of it, is just play with it. There's no right and wrong, it's just playing around with the look 
and if you don't like where it's going you can always grab the black paint and go right over top of it if you feel that the white is a little too strong the concrete look is really created by the white wax hitting inside the low points and then by knocking back the white wax on the high points this is just kind of giving it a uniform to look across the entire candle holder and I'm just playing with it as well. When you get liberal with your paints and you put on two good strong coats and you will actually get quite a bit of texture from it, this way you're gonna have lots of almost open pores created by the paint which also the white wax can sit in. So again, this will create that concrete effect. I had to share Pascal's discovery of the mirror. It was just too cute. Absolutely adorable. Bringing a new puppy into the home is all about eat, sleep, and play every hour, but it's a lot of fun. I want to show you how easy it is to create a waffle stitch. I made a throw blanket using seven skeins or balls of yarn for my project, but for the video I wanted to show you a demonstration so I could make it as easy as possible for you to be able to follow. With the waffle stitch you can create it so it's very textured which gives it a nice thick bulky look. You're able to make all kinds of things with a waffle stitch and you, you can use any type of yarn of your choice as well as crochet hook size of your choice. I created some face cloths with a 6mm crochet hook and for the blanket I'm actually going to be using a 12mm crochet hook. So the bigger the hook, the the bigger the waffle stitch will turn, meaning it'll be thicker, bulkier. The smaller the hook, the smaller that the stitch will be, so the project will be a little bit tighter, and it's perfect for those smaller projects like the dish cloths or face cloths. For the demonstration of the throw blanket, that's where I used the 12 millimeter crochet hook. So first thing I did was make a slip knot, pretty easy. Now I want to create a chain of 22 stitches. So just pulling the crochet hook through each stitch, you're pretty much creating a braid. So again, for the video and hopefully for an easy demonstration, I just wanted to create a chain of 22 so I can show you how easy it is to create with the waffle stitch. So any size project, you're going to be using an even number of stitches. So for the first thing I want to do is go back three stitches and now I want to create a double crochet. So pretty easy, 
you're just going to go into the stitch and keep pulling through removing two so I'm going to have two stitches on my crochet hook then I'm going to go into my next stitch pull it through remove two stitches remove two stitches and that's a double crochet So I'm going to continue on and when I get to the end of my chain of stitches I should have 20 double crochets across my chain. With the double crochets they're going to be a little bit longer so this will actually stitch up quite quickly. If you're new to crochet I definitely recommend to practice a small little project similar to a face cloth or a dish towel or even a little pot holder. Once I've completed my 20 double crochets, I'm going to add two stitches. So I just like to go back and count, make sure I have 20, and then I'm going to show you the pattern that goes to make the waffle stitch. So at the top of your double crochets, you're going to notice there's a bit of a braid, so there's these two loops. That is actually the top of creating another double crochet. So if we were just going to continue double crocheting all the way through we would be using that top stitch but to create the waffle stitch what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the actual crochet double crochet post so as you can see right here I've done two double crochets now for my third stitch I'm going to use the post which is going to bring the stitch forward creating this ridge so I'm going to make a double crochet in that post. Now what I want to do is go back, use that top stitch, and do a regular double crochet. So two double crochets, then a post double crochet. Now I'm going to go back and do two top double crochets. Now I want to continue this pattern all the way across. So how it's going to work is two top double crochets, one post double crochet. And then once I get all the way to the end, I'm going to add two stitches again. Really important with double crochet is to make sure that you add the two stitches before you turn your work around. So I'm going to start to form these kind of little squares. That's what I'm trying to do with the yarn and the stitches is create these little squares. I'm going to end off with my last double crochet at the top, continuing all the way through as a pattern. It's kind of tipped off to the side a little bit there, so make sure you don't forget to grab that last one. Once you complete that double crochet, again, you wanna make sure to remember to add two stitches at the end of each row. Once I flip the actual demo around. Now it's going to look a little bit different on the back and the sequence of this waffle stitch is you're going to do one row and then you're actually going to be doing the reverse. Now I don't want this to get confusing it's just the way I like the look of it. So these first two stitches I would normally just do two top crochets, double crochets, but in order to create the waffle when I get started on this row, what I'm going to do is one top double crochet, then a post double crochet. You don't have to do it like that. You can just do two top ones if it makes a simpler, if you're a beginner and you just kind of want to follow along. But I'm going to start with one top, one post, then one top again. Now, this is the sequence. As you can see, this is the back side of the waffle. So we have two kind of recessed stitches, meaning they're pulled back and then one pulled forward, which is kind of a ridge. Now I have to kind of do that reverse because I'm going back to where I started. So I'm working from the back side of this. So what was two back stitches from the regular double crochets. Now I'm going to do two post double crochets and I'm going to do one top crochet. So I'm doing the reverse of what I just did minus this very end and I'll explain that in just a moment. 
So again, I have two double crochets in the post, one top double crochet. So I'm gonna go and do two double crochets in the post. So two, which I guess you'd call two post double crochets. Now I'm gonna do one top crochet. But this is again, because I'm doing, to make the waffle, I'm making it from the back. So we need to master these two rows and then keep repeating them. Once you've mastered these two rows, that's gonna create that perfect little square with the waffle ridge all the way around. Once you have these two rows completed, you'll be able to follow suit with what you've been doing and do it in repetition. So I'm doing a top double crochet here and I'm gonna end this row off with two post double crochets. So I wanna repeat what I just did just to put a little bit more clarity. So the reason is too is because of the way I like to make the sides. So when I flip my work around, you're gonna be able to see a little bit of this form starting, this creating these little square ridges that come forward. So I'm going back to the way I started the first time. So kind of my first row of stitches, not my first row of double crochets, but my first row of waffle stitches. So I'm gonna start with the two top double crochets. Now again, to keep that ridge form, that where it kind of protrudes forward a little bit, I'm gonna do one post double crochet. Then I'm gonna go and do two top double crochets. And then I will do one post double crochet. Now you can really start to see a full square as we get into this third and fourth row. But as you can see, there's the top, here's the post, and it's just the repetition. Once you actually get those two rows mastered, you can make all kinds of fun things with this waffle stitch. It's probably one of my favorite patterns. The great thing is, is you can use any type of yarn of your choice and you can pick up some great bargains at thrift shops. Sometimes they'll even have brand new yarns that were brought in from old stock and you can get it for a fraction of the price. So I'm just gonna keep repeating and as you can see, we're starting to get a little bit form going here with our waffle stitch. Just did the double post crochet. Now I'm going to do the double crochet at the top. That end stitch at the very last, I'm doing a top double crochet. It's always just kind of a little bit on the side, so you just want to be careful you're picking that up okay. And at the end of every row, you're going to add two stitches, then you're going to flip your work around. So on the back, you're going to see kind of that post division, but on the front of it, you'll see the waffle look. So again, just for the way I like to do it, I'm going to do the back side. And again, it's just how it comes out for this pattern. I like to do a top double crochet. Then I like to do a post double crochet. Then I will do another top. Instead of just going two top double crochets and kind of going along and leaving it just kind of one row dangling. It just seems to work in symmetry this way, but it kind of makes it confusing because you're trying to follow the same suit both from the front and the back, but it's just so the one side doesn't kind of not follow suit, if that makes any sense. But again, if you'd rather just kind of follow exactly the front and the back the same, it will still look good. This is just a preference of mine. So again, all I'm doing is the reverse of what I just did the previous row. So I'll be doing two front post double crochets, one top double crochet. And then when I flip it around, it'll be the opposite. Two top double crochets, one post.
post double crochet and again once it starts to take form you'll be able to follow along exactly just by looking at if I'm at the front or if I just need to go to the top and again that's what's going to create those uniform squares giving it that nice ridge box giving it the waffle look A project like this, if you're going to start with 22 stitches and you want it to go say about 14 rows up, that would be a really nice size for a face cloth. If you wanted to do the throw blanket, I would recommend something maybe around that 80, 90 chain of stitches. This will give you a really nice size. I would just recommend to start a chain of any project with an even number 20 22 40 42 so that way you can create your uniform stitches and squares and for the throw blanket I use seven balls of yarn so the amount of actual skeins or balls of yarn you're going to need will depend on the actual width of the yarn you're using this is a pretty standard size width it would be considered bulky but not super bulky so but again depending on what type of you know yarns that you like to use if you want to use acrylics or you want to use wools or you want to use cottons it's pretty much sky's the limits or whatever is available or on sale if you wanted to put closure to the beginning chain tail i just recommend making two knots and then you can weave in the tail of the yarn and the next thing I wanted to quickly show you is how to close any of your projects when you're doing a crochet project like this. So if this was going to be my last double crochet and if whatever size my project is to be finished, all I'm going to do is cut off the working yarn. Then I'm just going to tie two knots and you can either cut it or you can weave the tail into the actual project. It's super fun. I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to create. These little base cloths or even a scarf is a great little starter project if you're new to crocheting. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really looking forward to sharing so much more with you soon. Until then, take care.